Welcome to our line. In these two examples here, we're trying to find the capacitance of each capacitor, noting that we have some dielectric between the plates, but not a continuous piece of dielectric, two different pieces, each with their own dielectric constant. In the first case, we have an equal size in each case. Here we have one that's only one-third the size of the total capacitor, and there's a two-thirds the size of the whole capacitor. So how do we find the total capacitance? Well, in this case, notice that we can almost take a look at this as being two capacitors side by side. We can actually separate them, connect them like this with a, maybe a conductor, and you can then see that, yes, these are like two capacitors in parallel. A capacitor in parallel can simply add it algebraically. So that's why we can say that the total capacitance is simply going to be the algebraic sum of the two pieces. If we now put into place what those two pieces are equal to, we can write it as follows that the capacitance is equal to, well, we have the dielectric constant, K1, epsilon sub naught, times the area, in this case it's only half the area of the total capacitor, all divided by the distance, and the distance will be the same for both, so that would be the capacitance of the first piece, plus K2, epsilon sub naught, again, half the area of the capacitor, divided by D. Now you can, now you can factor out, let's see here, uh, we can factor out a one-half, an epsilon sub naught, an A, a D, let's see, this is what we should do. So capacitance is equal to, um, how about K1 plus K2 divided by 2. So I'm factoring out a 2, I'm factoring out everything else, then what I have left is an epsilon sub naught, which is common to both, an area, which is common to both, and a D, which is common to both. I just factored out the one-half, and then I left the K1 and K2 alone, and that way we have a good way of representing the total capacitance. And that's it. It's as simple as that, because they are in parallel. Now, it becomes a little bit more difficult when we have them not in equal size. So let's see what happens there. Again, we're going to add up the two pieces algebraically. So this is equal to K1, epsilon sub naught. Now the area is only one third, so it's one over three A divided by the distance, plus K2 epsilon, and I should say epsilon sub naught, not epsilon sub one, uh, times two-thirds A divided by D. So if I factor an epsilon sub naught A and D and leave everything else alone, I end up with this. So I end up with C is equal to uh, one-third K1 plus two-thirds K2 all of that multiplied times what's common, which is epsilon sub naught, A divided by D. And then I can bring one third, put it in here. So this would be C is equal to K1 plus two K2 times epsilon sub naught, A over three D. And that would be the capacitance of a capacitor that has a dielectric situated like that. So you can see those are fairly straightforward. What would be more difficult is instead of having the dielectrics go like this, is have the dielectrics go like that in a vertical direction. Then it becomes more difficult because then we have to add them in series. And of course, then we have to use the one over rule. So that will be in the next video. But here's a fairly straightforward way of adding capacitor, pieces of the capacitor when they have different portions of dielectrics. And that's how it's done.